Well, good evening, laddies, lasses and lassos. Welcome to the click you smell absolutely astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Did you know there has been a popular discourse lately about who is the main character on the channel The Click? Could it be Click that is the main character on The Click? Ah! Oh my god, was it me all along? <laughs> no, uh, apparently not. It's the emotional support team, and that is the main character of this channel. Great. Grab yourself your own glow-in-the-dark emotional support team with the day before it's gone. You think you're king of your house? <laughs> we can fix that. Get yourself a glow-in-the-dark emotional support team right now before they're gone forever. They're only available for like another day or so. So don't regret it for the rest of your mortal day. Speaking of people who still think they are the main character, and they have also not bought an emotional support team, we're gonna watch people on r slash I am the main character, which is a beautiful place of entitled people and just online trends gone completely astray. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, let's get started, shall we? Is this like an airplane bathroom? I think this is an airplane bathroom. No, are they setting up for cooking in the toilet on an airplane? Okay, I'm not an expert when it comes to vacuum toilets, but I would imagine that lighting a fire inside of a vacuum toilet... <laughs> In an airplane. It's not only like hyper illegal. <laughs> it's not very safe. And for good reason. They usually say that smoking isn't allowed on airplanes. I would think torching a toilet is definitely against the rules. I swear to God, these challenges should not be called like cooking in random place challenge. They should be called like how to end up on a no fly list speed run. Jesus Christ. Trying to see if the guys I play pick up basketball with will compliment my makeup. Yes, queen. Mm. <laughs> I was just gonna say, it's like parking was easy. A little small talk, all right? <laughs> Trying to make it obvious. Desperation kicks in. Update, no compliments were given. <laughs> well, it's probably not the place at the time, right? People are just there to play basketball, I guess. <laughs> Okay, don't get me wrong. It's always nice to observe your friends and give compliments when something is new. Like, for example, did your friend get a haircut? Do they have a new shirt? Have they been working out a lot lately? Pointing out things that people obviously put effort in is very nice and very endorsing. But it's also a little bit odd to go around and, like, film yourself in selfie mode waiting for compliments. <laughs> There's like the wholesome aspect of give people compliments because it's nice and it can really improve someone's day. Or like uh, fishing for compliments. I think it's two distinct things, I suppose. When your sister is in labor, but you just happy it's not you. Or yes, TikTok dance on her, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. And then the mother just joins in. <laughs> hey, sis, you're in labor pain. Damn. <laughs> and the mom just did it. Yeah, Courtney, damn. <laughs> you know, the amazing part about being old on the internet is that I was here long before dabbing was a thing, and I have been here long since it was no longer cool. It's absolutely amazing how trends come and go, isn't it? But like, how to make your sister's pregnancy about yourself? <laughs> My sister is prego, but I'ma just dab on her. Although I do think it's staged because it doesn't look like she's actually throwing up in the background. It seems very, like, rehearsed, you know? So it's pretty fake. I think everyone is in on it, so maybe no harm done, but it's still like a little bit odd, isn't it? Losing a student is never easy for a building principal. Still smiling, still standing, still leading, still teaching, learning and growing. Hashtag justice strong hearts. A student died from drug overdose. What? Oh my god, this is not the time and the place. This is the kind of stuff you post after having like a tough financial quarter. You know, not when a student dies. It's like that TikTok when the doctor was like, oh my god, it's all about me and that kind of stuff. And it's so whack because it could be a good conversation, you know, how to deal with hardship, how to overcome things, how to be, you know, empathetic towards each other, how to get through it together, how do you support families that go through this kind of stuff. But instead, it just turns into a me moment. <laughs> Come on. How to not be a respectful tourist. Okay, I think, like, climbing up on landmarks to ride them for pictures <laughs> is probably not how to be a respectful tourist. Oh, come on, fam. <laughs> POV, American in Europe. Okay. <laughs> Just filming people, like, gently glancing over. But you don't even wear a shirt! 
under your jacket. Of course, people are gonna look. You're just stomping through a subway, looking like you're walking on a model walk, and they're like, oh my god, look at people glancing over. I read a few comments regarding clips like this, and in some instances, the people that are fishing for these reactions also have, like, something written on their chest, or the cameraman is playing loud music, or, you know, something like that. It makes people look over, and then they film it to me like, oh my god, look at this reaction to how hot I'm being in the subway. <laughs> We're past the point of meta reaction content. Now it's like doing something mildly intriguing and then filming other people glancing over and be like, Oh, it's the new reaction content. It's people reacting to me. We public, there's so much to react to. <laughs> I am howling at the second POV. All right, we have a couple of quirky girls just hopping in. It's all frolicky and dandy. Wow, look at that. Oh, wait, there's just a dude. <laughs> wait, it didn't even look if the pool was, like, free before just tossing themselves for a picture and, like, smacking some guy's head. That is some real main character stuff. How dare you put your brain <laughs> in the way of my backwards swan dive? <laughs> What's left of you? How am I supposed to tell you I don't want to see you in I'm sorry, can you please be quiet? Yeah, sorry. It's okay. You know, one thing to take away from all this kind of stuff is that with most things in life, there is a time and a place. A lot of people I see singing like this in public or in cramped spaces where people are like kind of forced to listen whether they want to or not, is that it's the wrong place at the wrong time. Like I, for example, am a professional meme reader. Can you imagine if I just whipped up a meme on my phone and started to read it out loud when I was sitting next to someone on the bus? They would think I was absolutely insane and rightfully so. Just because I'm professional it doesn't mean I have to impose it on everyone all the time, especially when they're stuck in place. Singing should be consensual. <laughs> be that person who stretches before a flight. Look at that. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Okay, there are certain hell tips with flying and that kind of stuff. For example, if you walk around a bit and move your legs, you reduce the chance of blood clots, for example, if you sit still for very long. This is accurate, for example, for long flights, especially if you're a bit older. So, for example, walking around a bit and stretching your legs, that kind of stuff is a really good idea. Uh, this, is a, this is a wild way to do it. <laughs> Not Usher thinking he was going to be in the middle. Oh, because he's like looking at... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that's so unfortunate. He even had like a little choreography planned along when it's like, yeah, come on, everyone. Yeah, everyone gather in the middle. And he's like way off in the corner. That's pretty funny. That That's pretty funny. You want to get your ass off my tire? <laughs> get the off my truck now. These wheels cost more than your life. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I also like how entitled the response is like, <laughs> What, really? You don't want us sitting on your car? I've never understood this trend. It's really weird. Why do you want to pose with other people's car if they are not there? <laughs> Here's a random parked car. I must sit on it. <laughs> Fam, some of these people. It's astounding. <gasps> oh, that's so sweet. You know... I usually say that main characters do exist, actually exist, not people that are self-proclaimed main characters. It's like really funny babies, it's puppies, and it's old people doing their thing and jamming along to something and absolutely slaying it. This is like real main character stuff. They really got this down. This is so beautiful. This video is an absolute treat. There's like an intermission in the rest of this absolute sloth. They even have people joining in! They're making their whole little They even got a kid on the side joining in. They started like a whole flash mob. That is so beautiful. This brings me hope about humanity. It's stuff like this that makes me think that maybe world peace is possible after all. We just need more old people to make, make people dance along and flash mob. Then world peace will be achieved. You should let me love you. Let me be the one to... <laughs> I also love how there's like, no arguing, just shut up, it's like, oh, okay. Okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll say it again because I think it needs repeating. Time and place, fam, you sound perfectly fine, but this ain't the place you're gonna bother people just going about their day. Even if something you do is impressive, it can still be bothersome 
if we're in the wrong place, you know? If someone was really good at backflips, I'll be like, damn, you're good at backflips. But if they're holding up a line when I'm standing in store to do backflips, I'm still gonna think it's annoying. I'm not gonna appreciate the backflips. <laughs> you know? Time and place. Ho, ho, ho. You know how people say that Santa isn't real because there is no way he can travel around the world that fast and visit all the kids? Well, you didn't think about the fact that I could use NordVPN now, did you, Timmy? NordVPN, NordVPN. Become safer online with one single trick. Do you have an online show or YouTube videos produced by a certain genius that you want to watch but you're in a location in the world where you can't view it? NordVPN has your back. With one single click you can change your digital location. Just like that. One of the most popular features with NordVPN is the threat protection. Are you worried about surfing online, downloading files or shady ads? Threat protection will keep you up to date with these shady, shady things online. Mwah. Sometimes, when I download PNG images and there's like, Oh my god, one download per day limit, I just, I just hop around with the VPN. Santa Claus life hacks, baby. Oh my god, what special surprises does Santa Claus have in his sack today? That is right, get four months extra on a two-year plan on nordvpn.com slash to click. It is risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you so much, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video and keeping people safe this scary Christmas. <laughs> And now, back to the memes. Mwah. <gasps> Shula Borf Day. Happy You can tell with this little kid that there are no actual tears or anything. They're just throwing a tantrum because they didn't get to blow out someone else's birthday cake. I mean, good to put your foot down, but damn, that's a little nasty tantrum, isn't it? Kids that age can really be entitled main characters, can't they? Isn't it like a movie or something like that, where one of the kids is such a main character that they have to receive birthday gifts on the other kid's birthday as well, so they don't feel like overly left out? <laughs> Every day is my birthday, if it's also someone else's birthday. I age very rapidly. Ah, I get tired in the store, let's just sit in the meat aisle. Like, literally on the food. Great, thank you, because <laughs> hygiene and food isn't the thing, I guess. Thanks. And this is an incredibly dangerous stunt in Wyoming. A woman taking a selfie standing right next to a bison in Yellowstone National Park a couple of weeks ago. The person who took the video says... They were in disbelief. Mm. They say the woman could have been gored. The animal likely would have had to be euthanized through no fault of its own. And that's always so sad. When people are stupid, something happens with an animal and then the animal gets punished. It's always such a shame. Unpredictable, but it injured people in the park more than any other animal. Mm. It's ridiculous. It's silly. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Ridiculous. <laughs> I think people like this are just stuck in a main character mindset, you know? Oh, accidents happen sometimes, I see that on the news, but it would never happen to me, because I am the center of the universe. I also think people like this have never actually experienced animals, because animals can be unpredictable. Even tame animals that are used to people can get frightened or be unpredictable in various ways, like respecting animals that ha can harm you, or especially <laughs> that are significantly larger than you, is quite important things can happen. It's not a fairy tale. With that said, love your fellow fluffy creatures. Animals are amazing and deserve love and head pats. But, but sometimes, you know, it's also good to keep your distance. Not everything should be head padded, perhaps even if it's tempting. Don't go try to pet the wild bison, for example. <laughs> you can give them mental head pats on a distance and that's fine. <laughs> children's movie is definitely not a children's movie. Oh, it's so 12 plus, but well, you should put it on there because my child is 12 and he cannot watch this. I brought my kid, my 12 year old kid to see this movie. And this is not a Christmas movie. My kid is crying. Posters and they're not even Christmas movies. This is a horror movie. Who's your manager? I need to talk to who's in charge of here. Uh, she's not uh, here. She's not here. What's her oh, name? Oh, that accent. I, I think this number. is in Norway. I, I want her phone number. Making the other guests upset. I don't care. Direct. I need this lady's number. <laughs> I need your manager, your manager's phone uh, name. Give you any information, sorry. I am not he handled it well. Yeah, he money. really did, didn't he? No, I'm not yeah, leaving. My kid advice. is crying. I do kind of love that, though. The culture shock that happens when Karens travel abroad and realize that, huh, 
people in other places in the world don't actually deal with this kind of stuff. And they won't just get the number of a manager to harass them on the phone just like that because they have protection against private information. Who would have thunk it? GG, Karen. And also the absolutely funniest thing is like the expectation that everything in the movie theater should be a children's movie just because you have a kid versus actually, I don't know, checking what the movie is about before going there with your kid. I imagine if I was bringing a kid <laughs> to a movie, I would check what the movie is about first. God, it's so stupid. Oh my god. The dude also said the movie was 12 plus, so the whole thing is probably overblown as well. But it's just such a main character moment, isn't it? It's beautiful. Maybe I can make a documentary about this stuff. Oh my god, my journey into mainstream film. Main character documentaries. York. Jimmy. Well, because I was bullied in elementary school. One time I just saw this lady doing... Oh my god, these shows are such trash. You just told me such a deep thing. Uh-huh. That sounded like a like cute inspirational story. It's like, hey, I had this hardship when I was a kid, and it inspired me to do this really cool thing that I got really good at. That's a cool story. That's like an origin story. I wouldn't even call that, you know, the term people use online nowadays, like trauma dumping. This isn't even trauma dumping. It's very simple, like, yeah, I was bullied, so I did this, or I got into fitness, or something like that. It's a, it's a cool origin story. It's inspiring. <laughs> what is this? Ah, shows like this are just beautiful. It's just the modern version of, like, reality TV slop. Mm, sometimes it do be tasty, though. Houston baggage claim. Loving his job. What is, what is his job? More exactly, destroy luggage and put it on the floor? Is that his job? didn't learn a thing. <laughs> what is even his job? Aren't the bags supposed to stay on the thing so they go all the way around and people can pick them up easily when they come out? What's the point of piling them up like this and also mistreating the luggage? Man, what a butthole. This feels like the kind of dude that God just put on our green earth to punish you. After you've traveled for a long time, you had three connecting flights, two of them were delayed, and you're just this close to absolutely losing it, then you have this guy <laughs> tossing your luggage into a pile on the floor. Or even better yet, you're standing a bit further up waiting for your luggage, and then you realize that it's not coming, and half an hour later you find it in a random pile on the floor for no reason. <laughs> what a great system. Yay. Oh no, did they go into a lecture we hall? Spirits team about building, like, spirits. It's like a cheer team. Yeah. You can just tell how no one in the room is, like, remotely excited about this. Everyone is just sitting and waiting and kind of face palming. Make sure you get the water. Sorry, guys. Your water. Yo, bus, look after my stuff. Why don't you just do this, like, outside? I don't know, on, on the grass, on campus, or something like that. You know, wouldn't that just be as good, if that makes sense? Like, if the thing you're doing is actually a good, well-thought-out thing that is fun, it should be able to be fun without, like, interrupting a class full of people, you know? If you have to interrupt this many people to make, make it a thing, it's probably not a good thing. <laughs> because the value, or the value, comes from how annoying it is, not from the thing itself. I took the mic off. Oh shit, go Maureen. Oh my god, it's so half-assed. It's not even well made. Go, one more. One more. Oh, I'm slipping, go. Oh my god. I mean, in the beginning of uni and stuff, sometimes you have hazing and that kind of thing. I remember we got like hazing-related missions, for example, when I was in uni. But it's usually kind of respectful towards the public. It's more about embarrassing yourself than it is about being a nuisance, right? Best school to go to, enroll. He's enrolled. He doesn't like slip and slide. Oh, no one likes their present. Everyone is just like, mm, mm-hmm. Nobody's even looking at the people just watching YouTube videos or something. Just okay, this is basically an ad break for the classroom. We have to watch this annoying TikTok group. This is basically a real life ad break. <laughs>
<laughs> Great, thanks. Like, that's the thing. When you're in uni, there can be a lot of quirky, fun things going on. Like, for example, hazing or parties. Or oh, there are various things. I remember there was a very trendy clip a few years ago of a dude dressed up as Gandalf who went into lecture halls and simply shouted, Ew! shall not pass and then just walked out but it's very short very sweet kind of funny and and it doesn't like really bother anyone this really drags it out and it's just a pain in the ass <laughs> If you do this, you have basically admitted that the thing you're doing isn't even fun in itself. The only thing that makes it fun is how much of a bother and out of place it is. And and that's not that's not really much value, fam. Okay, got a bit of a waterfall, got some hair action. Apparently there's a lot of people with like really long hair on the subreddit for some reason. Okay. So we got fixed our hair in front of the waterfall. Yay! And <laughs> there's just a crowd of people waiting. Oh my god, I am so happy. They didn't cut this clip two seconds earlier and you see the amount of people waiting for their turn to go up and see the waterfall because we gotta film this little TikTok when I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That just encapsulates the entire subreddit so beautifully. Oh, I'm so happy with this clip. That was perfect timing. Hell yeah, gold star. Oh, okay. Wait. So today is gonna be all about me. Oh! Wait, who snatched the mic out of whose hand? That looked like a wrestling match, lady. And I guess you got your moment. But if I'm gonna be honest, if that's what it looked like when I graduated, I'm not sure if I would want that as my moment. Dear God. I'm kind of intrigued what the plan was. Because at least when I graduated uni and stuff, it wasn't that huge. It wasn't like a ceremony, it was some nice stuff, and then you go up on stage, receive your diploma, and you kind of shake hands with people, that kind of stuff. And then you stand around for a bit, some pictures are being taken, that kind of vibe. But, but like you, as just an individual, is very brief. I'm not really sure what, what the expectation here was. I like the mic drop, which is more like a touchdown into the dirt. <laughs> and classy. Is he singing to the cops? But what? I think what he was picturing was like a montage when everyone starts singing together and be like, we're standing up to the man. Jesus, okay, he's getting louder. I don't think he needs a choir, he, he has himself. What is it with the amount of main characters in airports? <laughs> Half of these videos I see is always someone in an airport terminal. Why is that? It's like the stupidest place to act main character on, because you'll just get tackled by security eventually. <laughs> he dropped his glass and stomped his own glasses. Why? And his phone. And I can't stop living this way. I'm coming out of my cage. You want a little Detroit here? Bro, this is an airport terminal. This isn't American Idol or whatever. Like talent show, maybe, maybe, maybe lack of talent show. Jesus Christ, what is this? <laughs> it's just so out of context. Intruder at Fashion Week. Oh, he just comes in in a trash bag. <laughs> and then it gets tackled. <laughs> Okay, that's a little bit funny, though. I will give this, like, half a gold star, because it's sort of making fun of, of <laughs> meta fashion and that kind of stuff, and how silly it gets sometimes. So, I, I like the joke. I do I do enjoy the joke. 21 Savage doesn't get recognized in Paris? Wait, wait, play that again. <laughs> Why does he look like he's 10 years old <laughs> and just left the pajamas party and waiting for his mom to pick him up? <laughs> that's what he looks like. This pajama party was no fun. I'm gonna have my mom pick me up. <laughs> That's the exact vibe. I feel like I've lived through this moment. It brought back some like deep buried flashback from when I was like nine. <laughs> That's amazing. And also like a side note, um, wouldn't celebrities that are very famous locally, so to say, travel to sort of get away from being a public figure? I would imagine, like for example, if you're super famous and specifically Sweden and you make content in Sweden, for example, wouldn't it be nice to travel to, for example, France to just 
be able to be completely in privacy as like a change of pace and relaxation. I would imagine that would be pretty good. Like I know some some big celebrity figures move to different countries after a while when they kind of like retire to get away partially from the public spotlight. So wouldn't that like be the thing? You know, like it's the opposite of main characterism, just getting away <laughs> from main characterism, right? <laughs> POV, your landlord says he's coming over sometime this week, but you never told him that you painted every surface in the house. Alright. Uh, oh, okay. As long as you paint it white before you leave, I think you should be fine. Yeah, that's generally the case. Like, he will probably be surprised at the ridiculous color scheme. <laughs> but guaranteed it's not the first time a tenant has painted a property. Does OP not understand it's normal to paint your home's walls? Make small holes for mounting shelves, etc. In most lease agreements, anyways, you paint it back. You fill the holes before you leave, or you pay a fee to have it redone after you leave. Very typical, very common. Maybe some places prohibit it, but without the context, it just sounds like OP doesn't understand renting. There is nothing entitled or main character about this, unless she plans on arguing about redoing it. Okay, the cabinets were a dumb idea. Those are much harder to revert to normal than the walls. But still, people do that sometimes. I am talking completely out of my butt. Painting your apartment is not a commonly allowed thing in leases. <laughs> what a twist. Our lease prohibits exactly that. It seems like a bit of a hit or miss. Maybe, maybe it wasn't allowed. That's why they made the TikTok. Or maybe they wanted to see more dramatic than it is. Without the context, I have no heckin' clue. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure if I would choose the same color palette though. I would make it all red and black because I'm a little edgy boy. For some reason I like the color red even though I'm a bit colorblind. It's slightly ironic. I should really make fun of that more often like, hey guys, what do you think about my new chair and the green details on it? <laughs> they just watch people be really uncomfortable as they explain it's not green. It is red, right? God, I hope it's red. POV, you are a black woman in the colors. What? What? All right, going around in a sassy dress, all right. But that was it? That was it? You you dress up, look look all nice, and you have a cameraman following you, and one dude, like, makes a cat call? I mean, don't cat call people like that, it's kind of kind of non-classy, unless the whole thing is staged, which wouldn't surprise me in the least, but... I don't know, the video's a little bit... <laughs> a little bit odd, I suppose. The whole framing is just... <laughs> main character based on race. At a travel destination, I'm assuming. Can you imagine if I went somewhere and made a video like this? Oh, but it's like being being Swedish in Ohio. <laughs> and <that is> what... <laughs> now I'm kind of tempted to do that just for the gag. Nobody cares what you do. Watch this. I could literally lie down on the ground and no one will care. They will just forget 10 seconds later. I could literally stand on this chair and give a motivational speech. Check this out. Attention everyone, attention everyone, I want to give a motivational speech. So that being said, I hope everyone has an amazing and fun-filled semester, filled with love, joy and positivity. And peace out, alright? I could literally approach a homeless person and make their day, watch this. Hello, my name is Ralph, I got you a lunch, I want to have lunch with you. I got it upstairs, I hope you like it. Yeah, yeah, thank you, no problem. Have a nice day. The truth is nobody really cares. What you do if you have anxiety, why waste it on people you don't even know? I kind of like that final message though. Like honestly, like, like some stuff online is very clout chasey and in the moment and even stuff that seems charitable is sometimes just made to chase clout. But I sort of like that message. Just like a good vibe, do a good deed. And the message about anxiety is kind of true. It's, it's sort of like a main character thing, right? But in a really bad way. It's like main character feeling, but it's more that everyone is always watching you to find out what you're doing wrong or what is embarrassing rather than, hey, I'm the main character because I'm narcissistic, you know? So it's a pretty good message. Most people won't remember your embarrassing moments right? That's a pretty good takeaway. So in terms of main character trends, I, this, this video is pretty pretty okay, man. I, I kind of like the vibe, though. It's kind of cozy. Yesterday I made a video about these two girls that were pointing and mocking a guy in their gym that was just trying to work out. Oh, come on, really? Oh, wow. Tripod just pointing at him, laughing and copying his workout because it looked goofy. I didn't really like that. I found it kind of cringe. So I made a video on it and it did so well that they took down the original video. You know, I was done there. I was not going to make another video. That was until they sent me a DM. They just wanted to let me know that it wasn't bullying. In fact, they oh. said they were playfully indicating with their fingers that they were copying his workout and they uh, they weren't bullying him. They Inconvenient. You no, know, back when I used to get made fun of, people would say a lot of stuff and I'd always question why. And they would say, it's not bullying. You know, it's just funny. Oh, it's for your 
amusement making fun of me. <laughs> yeah, it makes everything 10 times better. Anyways, they just uh, asked for me to take down the video, and I responded with what any intelligent man would respond with. I can't breathe when you're not there. <laughs> the town of Yapsville needs their mayor back. He even tried to get their friends to ask me to take down the video. Buddy, it's not happening. Help, there's a bomb strapped to my chest. It's about to explode at any minute. What do I do? I don't know to... Oh, it's beautiful though. I love the troll responses. It's showing that you don't care at all. It's also very convenient, isn't it? The bully decides if it was bullying or not. Yeah, I've heard that one before. That's a very common excuse. Why are you taking it so seriously? I wasn't bullying. You're just sensitive, which is just another layer of bullying, ironically, which is, which is wild. I think what I find the most staggering is the lack of self-awareness. Mocking someone with imitating them is, is quite like nasty and non-classy to begin with. But to also film it and put it up online. You never in this process you thought this would like cross the line into bullying or maybe even harassment, you know? <laughs> That's pretty wild. He doubled down and be like, this wasn't bullying. It was all it was all fun for the bullies. <laughs> oh! So glad you decided it wasn't bullying. Great. Why are you getting closer to me? Oh yeah, economy class on an airplane, baby! Booyah, got party! Oh my god, I, I swear to god, sometimes I'm a bit jealous of these people. I wish I had 10% of their lack of social anxiety, because I would be literally unstoppable. It would be so beautiful. <laughs> Regular crazy New York City. Oh, I clipped together like a compilation. This is beautiful. <laughs> what is it? What? Oh, okay, that's pretty cool though. I like myself a Pikachu. Oh. Uh. Okay, funky costumes is probably like the least bad of it. Because they're probably just on their way to, like, a masquerade party or something. Oh. Oh, God! Okay. Nice. Thanks for that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. What? What? There are a lot of rats and squirrels in the subways for some reason. What a vibe. It's the free pet. Oh yeah, just lick it up. Yep, yeah, exactly. I saw a, a guy twerk on this one. Let me just clean it real quick with my tongue. That's good. I right, just taking a nap. <laughs> Another rat. <laughs> oh, we got a snack. I mean... I like myself a little danger noodle, right? One of my favorite fantasy pets would be like a fuzzy danger noodle. But I'm not sure about bringing it loose on a subway. Oh, I thought someone was bringing a Christmas tree first, but they just they just are the Christmas tree. Okay. Another danger noodle. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, is it? It's just a sausage someone left behind. A little sausage baby. Great. Oh, God. Oh, we have hot tub streaming in the in the subways now. It's, it's really spreading fast, isn't it? Of food. Oh, that's kind of wholesome, though. I like that. Look at that. It's really cute. I like that. That's really sweet. <laughs> it's like a Christmas table or something. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a good wholesome ending. I like that. What a nice ending. Hell yeah. <laughs> I approve. What's something that you really hate about a guy? When I'm trying to go to the bathroom on 6th Street, and they're like, Hey, can I ask you a question? <laughs> you? Wait, <laughs> Wait, he didn't pick up on it? Wait, play that back, play that back. Look at how she stares him down when she walks away. Look at that death stare. 
And he doesn't pick up on it. It's like, oh, okay. That was oddly specific. What about you? <laughs> Whoosh. You're trespassing. You're threatening me with a weapon climbing oh. a wall. Yeah, I have you. Anybody. I have you on camera, and oh, I have I'm you. I'm not threatening you. you, you I'm were, gonna go okay. there and cut that. Is this your plant? Is this your property? No, it's not. It would be against the law for you to climb that wall and to cut these plants. I'm gonna cut it down. I'm about to blow up the god place. Okay, now you're threatening to blow up the god place. Oh, I'm calling the. Say You god son of a. <laughs> That is so much. Can you imagine this neighbor coming over your fence with cutting equipment and just screaming at you so they're gonna blow stuff up? You either let me cut this plant or I will blow it up. What, what are you even talking about? That's absolutely wild. These glasses are too sick. I'm gonna be honest, it's a pretty cool concept for like a cosplay or something like that, but I just imagine, you know, ending up next to this guy on a dance floor or something like that, and you're just getting constantly blinded by lasers who may or may not be, like, safety approved for getting in your eyeballs. <laughs> you know? This feels very much like a bother. If you're just filming yourself doing a cool cosplay, that would be one thing, then I agree it's cool. If you're on a dance floor where this is literally gonna blind everyone else, not so much. There is so much stuff in this video that falls into that category, that like in a vacuum, in isolation, outside of the greater context, you know, the gadgets, the singing, the dancing, all this kind of stunts and stuff, is really cool. But it's just the wrong place where it's really bothersome for people, you know? It doesn't matter if you're great at singing if you're screaming your lungs out in a library where people are trying to study, you know? It doesn't matter how good you are if you're being obnoxious with it. Maybe I should get in too. What are you gonna do? Hit him, laughing emoji. <laughs> oh. And they're always playing stupid, the pranksters. But I'm just trying it out. Is that a a Oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to go hit him? Oh, you bet I Oh, I got you on camera. I got you on camera, man. Oh, my God. 16-year-olds thinking they're hot. I swear to God, that's a vibe. Oh, definitely a vibe, isn't it? My God, I got you on camera. What do you mean, being confronted by the store owner? Come on, don't do this. You're being very silly. It's embarrassing. You're going to look back at this in five years and be like, oof. Yeah, we were cringe. God damn. Oh, look at that. We got another airport terminal. Hell yeah. <laughs> so what? What is the, He's trying to like uh, also do an American Idol sort of thing. And break through with the with a rapping career, I suppose. Why do people always do these in like airport terminals? Is it because people can't get away? So they're like forced to listen to your stuff? <laughs> it's kind of like in that Black Mirror episode when you're like in your room. <laughs> And ads start playing on all your walls, and if you close your eyes, the ad pauses and waits for you to watch it again. You know? It's sort of like that. You can't get away from it, so you're forced to watch this person's basically IRL ad for the stuff they're trying to sell. That's basically what it is, isn't it? It's just a forced IRL ad in a place where people can't really get away because they're waiting for their flight. It pains me. <laughs> hmm, it's safe to say that this man was way too insecure and let other people the best of him uh, in his emotions whatever whatever he's feeling i'm not cheating i'm not doing anything that's like foul or wrong i'm just literally having a good time but besties taking a shot body shot off of me and yeah my tits are out because i'm in rosarito and they put a f sticker on my titties and that's one but the, the second one I'm like dancing with another one of the workers because he was a vibe and he poured a shot in my mouth, flipped me around. Is he jealous? Like, but okay, I guess for like a submissive, boring bitch, yeah, that's wrong. Like, <laughs> it's an issue. Like, wait, hold on, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Different relationships have different boundaries for what is okay or what is considered cheating, right? It can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. If I was in this situation, 
I'm not even sure if my main concern would be like cheating. I would just be so incredibly embarrassed. I'm gonna be honest, fam. Like, I'm not even sure how many of these clips we can show on YouTube. I think we have to blur most of it out. But one of the clips is literally lifting up like the bottom of a bikini to get a sticker in there and slap it on. And then like body shots and all that kind of stuff and uh, stripping for your friends and that kind of thing. I don't know, fam. Like, wild parties are one thing, but... I think maybe you're not ready for a relationship if uh, you want to do these kind of things that sometimes reach a quite intimate level uh, with someone who's not comfortable with it and they have expressed us discomfort, but instead it turns into them being insecure. I don't know. That just sounds wild. Either you have to find someone who's on the same wavelength that could do these things themselves and you not being upset about it in reverse, or you have to kind of decide what is more important, I, I suppose. This is... Uh, Ooh, that was, uh, that was wild to watch. God damn. It's tough, Blorp. From one session, here is something I got. Your answer suggests a severe level of depression. This is something. But yeah, I definitely didn't mean to trigger anything in you with it. Well, Blorp, I don't have good memories that associate with lol. What do you, what do you mean? Because after people do the most horrifying things to me, they say lol or just laughed. Laughter is a trigger because sometimes bullies have laughed. I don't think that's true, but if it is, it's really sad. They said lol or just laughed, which is the PTSD stems from- Wait a second, you're telling me that the PTSD comes from the word lol and not the actions before that? If it's happening more than three times, then it's a fear. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> happening more than three times? What are we talking about? I'm just going to be physically laying in bed, lol. Hmm. I have to, my mom wants me to. <laughs> really? The lol? What? Oh, sorry, my bad. Does it look like I'm joking? One more and you're done. I don't freaking play around with my PTSD. As my friend, you should understand. Seriously, this is not funny. I'm sorry? Well, I took my shot. Thanks for that waste. Uh, what? I have to take a freaking shot every time it triggers. What? Wait, what? what, what wait, do you mean, do you mean like, like, a, like a needle? What, shot of what? It doesn't let me go out of person into something feral. Oh my god, what is this even on about? Honestly, you're being inconsiderate because I trust you. You use the word that is very incapacitates me. I am sorry, Blorp. I won't say that word next time. This poo made me go through months of physical therapy with the word lol. Oh. Every time lol is mentioned, I get a trigger. Don't ever say it. I won't, I promise. Mmm, bear emoji. That's the good bun. Meh. This conversation gives me really... <laughs> odd vibe, because the whole thing just feels like someone who's role-playing something very serious and kind of making a mockery out of it and using it as a way to guilt trip or control their friend, which is probably not the way to deal with things like this. Th this is very icky. I don't think you guys understand the circumstances. Wait, I told Don one now. I don't care, this is restaurant. You don't shoot me. You wanna fight? Fight with me outside, okay? <laughs> Wait, what? Fight, man. Go ahead. I'm man, not come fighting. On. What is <laughs> Wait, this dude is just willing to throw hands with a random person filming themselves in the restaurant because he wasn't speaking Chinese? People being upset that others, for the language they speak, will always be an alien concept to me. I mean, maybe they were more obnoxious before the video starts, I have no idea, maybe this has more context, but if that's it, that doesn't seem like a big issue. Is this a kidnapping no, 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 prank? Help, come out, no, 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 no. No. Oh, come here, hurry! I'm gonna give it The, they have literal multiple police cars rolling up. Oh my god. Holy sh- Okay, fam. Okay. You know, pranks are supposed to be light-hearted. They can be a bit embarrassing, maybe. That's fine. But everyone is supposed to laugh in the end. You know, that's the whole thing. Pranks aren't inherently harmful. <laughs> if, like, the entire precinct is called on your prank and you risk someone getting, I don't know, shot because they don't know what's going on and they think it's a hostage situation, maybe it isn't a good prank. I wouldn't even call this a prank. Th this is just stupidity. <laughs> God damn. 
since my husband is always working, I decided I'm going to follow him around with this flashlight on all day. Follow this post for updated pics of me bothering him today. <laughs> and there's a picture just glowing it in his face while he's sleeping. So I'm assuming he's always working, which means working night shifts. And the best thing you can do as a loving partner is go around all day with a flashlight in his face and bother him when he's trying to recover after work and like supporting your household. Yikes. They ran through and cut the entire line in EPCOT. I don't even know what that is. Club, maybe? Or is it like a ride? Maybe it's a ride. Is that, an, is that supposed to be an insult? Shut the f run, run, run. I don't give a f You shouldn't have said s to me. Mind your business. You shouldn't have cut everyone. Mind your business. They did it. I got here before. Oh, when you get off, they cut on the wall. They cut. So then. You're a nerd. <laughs> These guys are like the embodiment of bullies from American high school movies. <laughs> Are they, like, are these people real? I assume those kind of people weren't actually real until I saw this. This is literally the caricature bully gang from a high school movie from like 2005. I make money, homie. I'm a businessman, but actually, I'd like to know the I'm a businessman. I make money. Man, there's no need to pour out your insecurities in a random line you cut into. You know, the thing is that most people who are secure in themselves and are on the path in life they're happy with and, you know, comfortable with the people around them, etc. They usually feel very little need to stir shit up for no reason whatsoever. It's usually just an indicator of insecurity or trying to overhype something or overcompensate for something. It's really weird. Or they're just bullies. Not all bullies are overcompensating. Sometimes they're just buttholes. 21. I got more money in NIL than you ever. Oh, God. Google me. What's your, Google me. What's your name? Google me. Google me. <laughs> Google me. What's your name? Google me. <laughs> Maybe he's embarrassed. <laughs> this reminds me very much of a quote from, I think it was Stephen Hawking, that said something along the lines of, no one that's actually achieved anything brags about, for example, their IQ. There are certain metrics about people that you only see people that don't have anything else to show that they usually brag about. And a lot of this stuff very much falls into that category. If you are securing yourself, you're generally a good person to the people around you, etc., etc. You usually don't feel the need to try to one-up strangers like that. It's really weird and it usually tells more about yourself and the insecurities and how you treat others because of it instead of anything that you think is impressive. It's just a little bit sad. It honestly makes me feel kind of sad when I see someone with really bad photos on Tinder because it's like... How ugly do you have to be in real life for you to think that those photos were the good ones? Oh, God. <laughs> this is you? Oh, no. Oh, that that just looks like a back beach somewhere. What? That's such a random photo. What? <laughs> there would be one thing with making a video about, for example, dating advice. Being like, hey, here are common mistakes I see in dating profiles. Here is how to fix that. Positivity, improvement, that kind of thing. Instead of just being like, oh my god, if this is a picture of... <sighs> Dear god. Hello, YouTube. I get questions a lot. What do I do when I get a fake ID? Well, I'll show you. So typically when I get a fake ID, first I'll let them know. Ma'am, this is a fake ID. <laughs> and then I'll wait for their response. <laughs> and that's the typical response. And then I tell them, well, if that's so, then why can I rip the fake ID in half like that? And typically they say... It's just like printed paper? And then I'll say, you can't stay here and you gotta go. You can't stay here and you gotta so, go. So uh, do you make like followers off of that or what? Yeah. You can't get it back, guys. <laughs> oh, you can't get it back. Can I get it back? No. Every other yeah. time it works, but here it don't. Yeah. <laughs> Probably because we're better than everyone else. Thank you, guys. Catch you later. <laughs> Can I get it back because everywhere else it works, but here it didn't? Did you just admit to having a fake ID on camera? That's that's not very smart. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a device that actually exists nowadays. That's great. There is a special feeling with having like these really big professional devices made for having panning shots, and then you put your phone on it. <laughs> phone cameras are pretty good nowadays, you know, don't get me wrong, but... The contrast is still mind-boggling.
Hi, a star. I'm a pretty big local influencer in the Tampa area. I'm actually a single mom and just got engaged, yay, on Thanksgiving. And I actually already pre-booked my venue and date, hoping my fiance would propose. <laughs> wait a second, wait, so you booked the wedding before a proposal has happened. It doesn't sound like he just happened to propose. It sounds like you probably <laughs> demanded it, I'm gonna be honest. I really want your band at my wedding and we'll do whatever I can to make it happen. I am persistent. Yeah, those first few sentences made that uh, pretty clear. The wedding is in October 5th, 2024 in Jacksonville. I cannot offer any money because my value comes in my social media presence. Oh, they will pay an exposure. <laughs> well, that's a classic. And also, I will have a lot of guests there performing in front of can help grow your business and get you future bookings. Mm, I love being paid an exposure. I am happy to tag you on my social media and leave a positive review in exchange for a free show. As stated before, I'm paying an influence. <laughs> At my wedding. I hope you choose to make the smart move and perform at my wedding. Oh, so you already call them kind of stupid if they don't accept this fine offer of being paid in exposure to this wedding you booked before the proposal <laughs> was even made. <laughs> what is this post, man? It's so wild. And like the detail sharing leading up to the proposal are also absolutely wild. Why are you even sharing that part so confidently? Oh my god! Well, ladies, lasses, and lasses, I do hope you learned something in today's very educational video, and I hope to see you again in the very near future, you beautiful bean. Have an amazing rest of your day because you do deserve it. Take care. Mwah.